G'day and welcome to another episode of Tomo's Tune Ops. On this episode, we're still in lockdown, so we're working on the Mazda and we'll show you how to change and bleed the cooling system. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments in the section below for things that you want to see me do. Now, first thing we're going to do is open the bonnet. Now, I've just dropped my son off to daycare, so it is quite hot. First thing you need to remember is cooling systems do get hot with the engine, so it is imperative you do not open the radiator cap when it is hot. If the vehicle is cold, it's a different story. You can open it any time. Now I'm gonna show you the most conventional way to change the coolant. Some manufacturers do it a different way. So before you start changing the coolant, consult with your manufacturer's specifications and double check the way to do it. Now you're not gonna need a lot of tools to do this, just a bit of space, some jack stands, a couple of screwdrivers, maybe a spanner, and just a drain tin. Now Mazda specified a change of coolant every 200,000 kilometers or 10 years, whichever occurs first. Because the car is 10 years old, but hasn't done 200,000 Ks, it's time to change it. Let's get to work. Now the next thing we're gonna do is jack up the car. Don't forget to use a jack stand. All right, now that the vehicle's on jack stands, we can drain the coolant. Now to prevent me getting too dirty, I'm gonna place a towel down for me to lay on. The next thing you wanna be doing is getting yourself a nice deep drain tin. The reason for this is if you get something that's too shallow, it's gonna spurt everywhere. This is gonna help catch all the deflecting coolant. Now the next step is to go underneath the vehicle, remove the under tray if it's fitted and find the drain point. In this instance, ours is quite easy to access, which is just here. All we're gonna be doing is turning that anti-clockwise, so to the left, and making sure the coolant starts to come out. Once it starts coming out, we're then going to release the pressure from the cap. This will help it to drain faster. Like I was saying before, don't ever open the cooling system when the vehicle is hot. But because we are starting to drain the fluid, we can now open the radiator cap without it spurting absolutely everywhere. Now the radiator cap shows various important pieces of information. The first one is the 16 PSI. That's how much pressure is required to be able to open up the valve at the bottom of the radiator cap. The second one is the FL22 notification at the bottom. That's a specific additive that they use for long life coolant. I've made sure that I meet these specifications when changing the coolant. Now you can run additives to help flush the cooling system depending how bad it is. If it is quite dirty, you can get an additive, run it through there for about 10 minutes, redrain the cooling system, and then go from there. The easiest way you can flush the engine is to remove the thermostat, reassemble the entire system, leave the bottom drain hose off from the radiator, keep topping up the radiator, run the engine until it comes out completely clear, then you know it's completely flushed. Now remember, not all coolant is exactly the same. Some is blue, some is pink, some is yellow, some is green. There's many different colors out there. So before you change it, make sure you use the recommended coolant for your system. Otherwise you're gonna induce problems with the vehicle. Okay, now that the cooling system stopped bleeding, we can tighten up the drain screw and then start bleeding it. Now it's important to make sure that the highest point of the cooling system is the radiator cap itself or the bleed point. So by having the vehicle jacked up, as well as having this bottle on there, this makes it the highest point, making it easier for all the air to come out of the system. The reason why we don't want air in the system is it's gonna create an airlock and it's gonna cause the vehicle to overheat or potentially the thermostat not open or the heater to not operate. Now there's sufficient coolant in the funnel, we're then gonna go start the car. I'm gonna show you how to bleed it. Now, once the vehicle is running, you want it to ensure that the air conditioner is switched off. When the air conditioner is on, it has a separate radiator fan to help keep the engine cool because of the extra load on the vehicle. The extra load on the vehicle creates more heat, which then needs to be cooled. So by turning it off, we are making sure that the radiator fan is not running unless the thermostat has opened. Now, you don't specifically need a funnel to be able to bleed it. You can just remove the radiator cap. Fill it up from here and just keep an eye on the level, ensuring that the level doesn't go down. If it does, just keep topping it up with coolant. Now, some vehicles don't run a conventional electric fan. They run a manual fan off a belt. If that's the case and you're unsure as to when your vehicle is at operating temperature, you want to grab both the top and bottom radiator hose. The top one's this one here, as it goes to the top, and the bottom one is down there. They should both be at the same temperature, 
when the thermoset opens. If that's the case, you know the system's bled. If one's cold and one's hot, you know it hasn't opened yet. Okay, so now we can audibly hear and see the radiator fan has kicked in. We've confirmed that the cooling system is bled and we've bled the system successfully. So there we have it guys, that's how you change and bleed the cooling system. Don't forget to wait until the radiator fan kicks in before you then switch the engine off to confirm the engine has been bled correctly. Make sure that the air conditioner is switched off as well and that you wait for those fans to turn on to ensure that the thermostat is open. If you're unsure whether the thermostat is open or not, check the top and bottom radiator hoses. Also consult the owner's manual as to what coolant to use and how often you need to be changing it. Thanks heaps for watching, we'll see you next time on an episode of Thomas Tune-Ups, all things DIY and mechanical.